Hey, what's up guys? Welcome once again to the channel. This time we're going to be checking out all the latest news on chemical and process engineering all around the world. I did the last um, review on I think the last 17 of April, so there will be a gap of maybe two weeks because I'm going to start from the last day of April until now, which is the 7th of May. So I will be making a review of the latest of the week. So if you may check out some gap or the news that are in this gap, you are more than free to do it. Remember that I do this mostly based on the column.co newsletter. Well, not mostly, essentially based on the column.co newsletter. Remember, this is a free newsletter. I strongly recommend to check it out. It's a very condensed way to get information of the chemical engineering world, if you're into that, especially to get acquaintance with companies, uh, industries, products, technologies, all these that is of course relevant for young engineers, but also for senior engineers, if you're into maybe uh, check out where the industry is heading, okay? So without further ado, let's get started. And I really love the title of the first news, Doggy, Doggy coin for chemicals. So remember Dogecoin is essentially a cryptocurrency which became famously or increased in value because Elon Musk tweet. So that's kinda meme coin. But anyways, the, inter the interesting part right here is that Blockchain is something that it's not only unique for cryptocurrencies or crypto cash. It's more of a technology that's going to be implemented eventually in all industries. And let's get started. Mitsui and IBM want to bring the blockchain to chemicals. So probably you're wondering wow or what can we do with blockchain technologies? So essentially, what this news is all about is Japanese chemical company, Mitsui Chemicals, which is essentially a big chemical company such as Mitsubishi, mostly into the polymer part. Yeah, they got functional chemicals, polymeric materials, basic chemicals, petrochemicals, films and shit. So what are they doing? It's essentially working with IBM to start working on a blockchain based resource circulation platform. So it sounds very fancy, but to be honest, it's essentially using blockchain technology to be able to track how the products are going through the chain and eventually form this circular economy. A little of background, when you hear blockchain, the first thing you probably think of is Bitcoin or any cryptocurrency stated before, maybe Dogecoin. But the blockchain technology, if you want to check out a little bit more on that, is here. We we'll recommend you to check it out if you have no idea of what we're talking about, especially if you only know this uh, technology in the financial world. But actually blockchain technology, as the name implies, is a type of technology. Has the potential to revolutionize the industry supply chains by making them more transparent. So one of the most important things on manufacturing or all these supply chains is to know what's actually happening in real life, real time. So I will recommend you to check out this uh, article, which is Harvard Re Business Review, building a transparent supply chain. It's one of the most important parts because as you will see, as with any kind of job, you want to be uh, with reliable sources of information. And you will see that supply chain is very either hard or it's not, always updated or there's always human tampering or human error right there. So what I think they're doing here is using this technology to get the, let's say the, the weakness of all supply chains to a single technology. Eventually you'll see the blockchain built into existing ERP systems, which these are essentially like SAAP or SAP or Oracle. Actually, you can check out the, the formal definition of ERP, which I will recommend you. This is strongly used. Uh, I'm pretty sure that if you're working right now in any manufacturing company, large company, you will have this for sure because what you want to have here is the production team and the planning team and the logistics team and the selling teams. All the teams gotta know what's happening, what product is coming on from the pipeline, how long it's going to take, how long the product has been on storage, 
uh, is the product still existing? Uh, can they sell the product? So all this, it will be very hard just to be sending emails. You have to have these ERP systems, which as the name implies, well, let's read this one right here very quick, to a type of software that organizations use to manage day-to-day -day business activities, such as accounting, procurement, project management, risk management, and compliance. And of course, supply chain, op supply chain operations. A complete ERP, a ERP suite also includes enterprise performance management, maybe you want to check it out, software that helps plan, budget, predict, and report on a organization's financial results. So either financial or economic side, but of course the, operate, or the operative part of the company. And probably wondering, well, okay, we already have that. It's already SAP or Oracle. Well, what they're doing is adding the blockchain technology, which is decentralized and cannot be, let's say, tempered or modified in any way. So actually here it is by the column.co. Basically, Mitsui Chemicals and IBM have agreed to develop a platform using blockchain to ensure that individual molecules can be traced through their life cycle. That has huge implications for the recycling of plastics and the circular economy. If you're still interested, try giving this more generic article for Harvard Business Review. So actually, I'm more worried about on the implications on the circular economy and how blockchain, I'm not going to be reading all this, even though it's very interesting how blockchain can be used and applied to a circular economy. Okay, Repsol, remember this is a huge oil and gas company from Spain, wants to help turn waste into methanol. Spanish petroleum company Repsol has announced that will be joining this waste management company and Canadian process technology company, Enarchem to build a waste to methanol plant in Spain. So guys, remember there's a lot of organic waste and if there is organic waste, you can typically convert most of that into methanol. And remember that methanol is nothing more than a fuel that can be burned to produce energy, typically in motors or engines, but not limited to that. The plan is essentially to uh, convert 44, uh, 440 thousand tons or 440 k tons of non-recyclable solid waste okay they don't tell you what type of waste i'm going to be assuming that it's domestic waste or maybe it's uh, agricultural agricultural waste and how do they do it they use these gasification technologies so this will be the chemical engineering part that you may want to check it out what is the technology they're using and let me let's go check it out so the feedstock, sorting, shredding, drying, if it requires, and feeding. Very important not to have water here. They start bubbling the feed in a fluidized bed gasifier. And what they do essentially is start separating residues. And what they do is send it to these catalytic reactions. And eventually what you want to get is the product purification. And that will be it. What else do we have here? Well, the technology. Okay, that's cool to hear that there's more technologies going towards recycling, towards circular economy. It's always great to hear that. Next news, Norion's new plant in India is up and running. So essentially Norion, if you have no idea, you can always check it out. And this is what I really love on the column.co. You can just, you're just one click apart to get to know a great company or a great technology or a new product and all that. So essentially they are sustainable, sustainable chemistry or materials. You can check out products. Let's see what do they have as products. Bleaching, polymers, salt, chlorine, specialty polymer surfactants and all that. Okay, great to hear this. What else is going on? Lion Basel licensed polyethylene technology to a new petrochemical, seems to be in China. Loom Energy deployed the first hydrogen power fuel cells. Okay, that's nice. If you're into uh, batteries or fuel cells, definitely go and check it out. Okay, Akron and Holder finished this plant's expansion. Okay, and acrylic acid. And all we need is somebody to meth. Thiel, not Toluene, Toluene, 
the loin. Okay. Okay, there's a guy. Let's check it out. The Instagram, the art of fugacity. Apparently, there are memes. Actually, this is one of my favorites. Chemical engineering students after taking a course in process safety. <laughs> nice. Okay, let's go to the next news, which is from May the 3rd, almost May the 4th. That's a... Sh let's see if... No, we, we skipped May the 4th. Will be awesome to see some chemical engineering news related to Star Wars or something to that. Uh, West Texas Intermediate crude oil is still considered in stable conditions. The Brent, Brent crude mix as well and natural gas apparently. Yeah, I think this is stable through all. Yeah, 2.91. Yeah, they're stable overall. And also always great to hear that because it's in a sweet spot. I think 60 to $70 per barrel is relatively okay it's not so cheap that it's not worth to extract them but it's not so expensive that energy becomes so expensive gasoline all that cleaning your pool with chlorine will be more expensive so US based pool chemical producers such oxychem and clearon are producing as much as they can produce of the TCCA which is actually this little actually let me see if they show it here no, there's no. Let's check out if we can see some of the pills. Yeah, the typical thing that you will see inside a pool, it's actually not chlorine itself because a lot of people think, especially non chemists or non no pe people that is not related to the field, they think this is actually like chlorine, pure chlorine or a salt of chlorine. And it's not actually it's three chloro isocyanuric acid. And it sounds maybe deadly because of this yeah, the cyanide part. But to be honest, it's just like mild for, of course, it, if you drink it and if you eat it and if you are uh, always swimming there, there might be a long term effect. But let's say for short term effects, it's not that malignant for our health. So what are they making essentially? Okay, yeah, we had chlorine to our pools. The solid material isn't chlorine, of course. Chlorine is typically gas. It's a mixture, okay. Well, essentially what I, we were telling. And the main issue is because last summer there was a hurricane in biolabs. Okay, so there was a fire in this company and the supply chain for the TCCA is getting short. Therefore, the large companies that produce the chlorine pills, let it be, are having problems with TCCA. Therefore, as a result, pool owners are uh, paying more for the scarcity of the material. So that's interesting to know, just in case chemical engineering is always there in your pool out there. Trinseo or Trincio is hoping to make bio-based rubber synthetically. And uh, yeah, uh, actually, okay, bio-based, sorry, because rubber, synthetic rubber has been a part of chemical engineering since I would say at least 100 years, maybe. US-based chemical company Trincio, and if you want to know it, sorry for butchering the name of the company, Global Materials, oh, okay. They make the plastic for Lego, which is awesome. Now I, I feel that I owe them something for my childhood. And the main issue is here that, okay, during World War II, the production of Buddha, the end from ethanol, which is the, one of the most common ones, was normal. Nobody cared from the bio-based stuff to make this rubber. Okay, that's okay. Increasing demand for sustainable products is making bio-based stock look more okay, yeah? So the interesting part right here is that it's bio-based, meaning that you can regenerate it. It's not like fuel or oil and gas based, meaning that you will not be able to get it. Uh, or let's say all the rubber that it's produced from that will not be forever. But the bio thing, it's always appealing towards the new technology because it means that it can be uh, re done or re reproduced all time long 
Trinsero produced many of the rubbers made that are used eventually in tires. And yeah, as you can imagine, the main market for rubber is tires, car tires. It's no secret, you can check it out here. But at the end, it's essentially this uh, double bonded material, D, meaning there's two bonds, sorry for the organic chemistry part right there. But essentially what they do is uh, polymerize this part and get the rubber. To do so, the companies have decided to start a feasibility study with the hope of building a pilot plant in Europe. So that's great news. I'm very happy for Trincio. Didn't know that they work with Lego and also uh, a bio-based material that is going to be on my tires sounds great rather than the uh, fossil fuel materials from oil or petroleum. I would really love to see that this is actually from bio sources definitely worth checking out. This CO2 neutral fuels plant is coming to Norway. Okay, so sounds interesting. The Norwegian EPC firm, Acre Solutions. Okay, what are they doing? Green hydrogen and furnace gas with the water gas shift reaction, fissure drops. Okay, okay. It's, well, essentially, this is classical industry. Nice to hear, especially if you're in Norway, more work for chemical engineers out there. What else is going on? Neste is modifying the refinery to produce a uh, half million ton per year of aviation, <laughs> sustainable aviation fuel. That sounds kind of interesting. I don't I, I cannot imagine a sustainable aviation fuel right now. Okay, biofuel, well, there. There might be sustainability in the sense that you can build or produce more. That might be the case. Eastman Chemical Company acquired the Spanish nutri nutrition additive producer. Okay, if you're into food technologies, that's always great to hear. Lemos Technology Polypropylene Process Technologies was selected for this plant in Nigeria. Okay. Mitsubishi Chemicals, new to CEO, wants to get rid of the company all businesses. Okay. And what do they mean with all companies? Let's check it out. Sprawling group. Okay, I cannot read it. No, unfortunately, not gonna pay for this. But if you're into Mitsubishi Chemicals, which I am because I have something special with Mitsubishi because I, I have owned Mitsubishi cars almost all my entire life. So when I hear or listen to something about Mitsubishi Chemicals, I feel this empathy that, okay, they produce my car, they produce chemicals, kind of cool company. SK Innovation and Kia Motors want to build a way to recycle EV batteries. So I really love this because EV batteries are a thing right now. They're growing and there will be a lot of EV batteries. Uh, remember EVs, electrical vehicle, or essentially the Teslas out there. And it will be great not only to produce with new technologies, but also to start investing in technologies for the recycling. Non-STEM mayors, are you to friends, chemical engineers? <laughs> oh, yeah. Actually, I would say that maybe chemists are the ones that don't like that much, the chemical engineers. I, as a chemical engineer, I always like to interact with chemists, but I always felt this, like, this superiority mindset of chemists that always think about us chemical engineers not being anything but chemical and so on so I don't know about you you guys leave something in the comments what do you feel the chemical engineer and chemist relationship is all about May the 5th the Cinco de Mayo which is a awesome holiday in the US unfortunately here in Mexico we don't celebrate it that much I would really love to celebrate it as you do it in the US guys uh, no cultural appropriation on my behalf. I would say that you're all free to drink tequila, use ponchos, sombreros. But I know it's a important issue right now with all the social revolution out there. Okay, so let's see what's up with the Cinco de Mayo. Unilever's version of Tide or yeah, Tide pots are made from emissions in China. Okay. So essentially, I will assume that emission from China, CO2 are converted. No, no, I'm just guessing. Let's 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 read it. Landsat Tech converted emissions from a steel mill in China into ethanol. Okay, yeah. So actually, the CO2 was converted to ethanol. 
by fermenting syngas. Okay, so syngas is essentially hydrogen and carbon monoxide. What they produce is CO2 and, well, essentially fuel. Okay, not gonna read all this. Anyway, so the EO, the ethylene oxide, and this is a very use or let's say abbreviation for ethylene oxide, so you can memorize it. But I also use it for equation oriented <laughs> methods, so not always what I imagine when I see EO. Uh, was added to some fatty alcohols by ethoxy, ethoxylation to produce a surfactant that. Okay, so essentially, this is a lot of things happening. Tide pots are made from emissions in China. The emissions are essentially converted to ethylene oxides, and these ethylene oxides are converted to fatty alcohols via eth ethoxylation. And eventually, what they then end up doing is a surfactant. Surfactant sounds very fancy, but it's essentially a detergent or something similar to that. Yeah, it's using detergents, wetting agents, emulsifiers, foaming agents, dispersants, all these things we use to clean stuff. Okay, so that's great to hear that emissions in China are not just going out to the atmosphere, but are used to use materials. Once again, Trincio officially acquired Archimas plexiglass business. US-based steranic producer Trincio, okay, makes sense, has completed the acquisition of Archima MMA, not mixed, uh, mixed martial arts, and PMMA, poly MMA. So MMA is essentially methyl methacrylate, methyl MMA. Okay, yeah, never mind, it's here. Uh, what? Wait, what's MMA and PMA? PMA? So what I really love about this is that it's straightforward and it's likely, so the column.co knows most likely that you many of the readers are not that familiar or acquainted with MMA or these type of materials, which I think is really cool. So if you're into, okay, what's MMA or PMMA? So PMMA is essentially polymethyl methacrylate, which is the polymer that is produced from the monomer MMA, methyl methacrylate. So you have it here and I'm pretty sure that you know the this brand plexiglass, which we typically it's like clinics, right? You tend to uh, assume that the brand name or the mat the product name is actually the materials name, but it's not. Plexiglass is actually the company or the technology, the product itself. The product, the former or the former product will be polymethyl methacrylate. Let's go back a little bit of background back in December, looking to become especially okay. Well, for me, it makes a lot of sense. Trincio is into ceramic materials and it's like into the polymer business. So eventually it makes sense that they want to acquire other polymer materials. And as stated here, what's happening is Archima is essentially going to the specialty materials and leaving out all the, let's say, materials that are into polymers. Philip 66 is even closer to renew its renewing its refinery. So I think we already saw something about this refinery. Yeah, last August. Okay, and it's going to be in San Francisco. So that's a very interesting part because I do know California has very strict rules for oil and gas companies overall or all the processes that are related to these because it's kind of satanized but i do think it's great that they are opening a or reforming or renewing updating a refinery in the west coast so that's great for also a lot of chemical engineers i know a lot of uh, engineers from california that will be great for you guys more jobs to get there philip 66 is now producing 16 percent of what it plans to buy 2024 so it's going to increase almost like six times its production, which is typical increase in production, requires people, so that's great, more jobs. The bigger picture, renewable diesel capacity in the US is expected to increase by six times, okay? I wouldn't expect that, six is a lot to me, but anyways. 
Let's continue. What else is going on? Aeneos Stero Solution. BASF joined this initiative to make digital watermarks on packaging to improve recycling. Okay. BASF also announced that it plans to make more enzymes. Okay, Axion Unicat. Let's proceed. And this is actually the fresh news from today. The West Texas is currently at $65, which is stated before standard or not standard, stable prices from the month, let it be. Shell decided to sell its refinery near Seattle. So Shell is going to be selling this refinery north of Seattle. Let's see what happens here. Oh, awesome. So air liquid, coffee shop, let's go and start decreasing the size. Okay, so it's actually not that far from Seattle. Because whenever we thought about refineries, never think they are actually in the city. It's always far away because yeah, refineries can be kind of messy. Okay, cool photos. Okay, not so many, but still nice to see and meet in person or virtually a refinery. Okay, what we have here is going to be selling it to Holy Frontier for 350 million. Holy Frontier is a Fortune 500 company. So I don't know about you guys, but whenever I hear companies or a Fortune 500, I do not know them. So it's always great to know other Fortune 500 companies. Essentially, it's a petroleum refiner company, which makes a lot of sense. Some context is 145,000 barrel per day refinery won't shells last refinery divestment. Okay, so Shell is actually divesting, which is something we all know. If you have been following the column that cool, probably you have seen that Shell is actually not so into oil and gas lately. So Shell, Shell aims to keep only top 10 refineries. As stated here, it started, let's say back from the last decade, it was operating 54 refineries and last October it went down to just 14. So that's awesome to know about it. Shell announces further reductions in its refinery capacity. So guys, as stated before, if you were following the column.co, you already know this. Shell is divesting, decreasing its production. So that's why I'm telling you guys, it's totally worth it to check out this news because you will try to understand maybe if you're in Shell or maybe you're applying to a job in Shell and you see that suddenly it got closed or something is because maybe you can connect the dots and say, okay, they are divesting. So maybe Shell might not be the best idea right now, especially if you're into the uh, refinery process uh, part. But let's continue. Shell wants to reduce its refinery footprint, which makes a lot of sense. It's a trend, very common. Why is Holy Frontier buying? Well, because it's a refinery, I will assume. Just because Shell doesn't want to focus on oil and gas or conventional oil and gas doesn't mean that we don't need it. Yeah, as stated before, we still need oil and gas. We need to refine it. We need our products, our gasolines. So Holy Frontier is just taking advantage that Shell is divesting and Holy Frontier is going for it. Nice. And of course, this will not be a 100% full lecture of news if BASF wasn't introduced. BASF, the king of kings of the chemicals, decided to share patents to help make batteries. Ma batteries most likely from lithium, batteries most likely that will be used for EV uh, or electrical vehicles. The German chemical giant BASF, okay, has shared its patent in order to Okay, what does it mean? 100 patent families. Okay, I'm having a hard time to understand what's happening right here. Okay, yeah. So the two companies have agreed to combine their technologies. So essentially what you do is, okay, I open my technologies. If you open yours, so it's a win-win or something like that. You're like compromising your technologies in order to get something advanced or further advanced. 
So what's happening here essentially is they want to produce a lot of cathode material for electrical vehicles, batteries, and this cross licensing agreement will rapidly increase BASF product development speed and ensure that no time is wasted trying to develop independent technologies. So essentially, they are getting together to improve their battery technologies and start producing because the electrical uh, cars or vehicles uh, demand is going to be increasing drastically. Siemens and Liquid Wind will make methanol together. We already read something on methanol. Probably wondering why methanol is getting so much attention lately because it's a biofuel which is readily available and a lot of technologies are out there. Definitely worth checking out guys just as I did here. The column.co and search for methanol and you will see a lot of things related to that. And you can do this not only for methanol, you can do it for oil and gas, you can do it for a company, you can do it for maybe some country, you can search for China, USA and so on. What else is going on? Solve stop producing fluorosurfactants. Okay, makes sense. Solve also announced plans to stop using thermal coal at this soda ash plant. So that's a huge one. Let's read about this. Okay, part of the Solve one plant strategic roadmap, the Rheinberg plant. Coal Exit will establish a new global sustainability reference for soda ash production. So essentially, a, they're working towards sustainability, making greener processes, making better or more friendly to the environment processes. That's great. DuPont Silicon Master Batches line just got rebranded. The new NAFTA will meet for the first time later this month. Okay. So yeah, I'm, as you might know, I'm from Mexico. So NAFTA is definitely something very important for us uh, in North America, free trade agreement. So it's important for Canada, USA and Mexico in all senses, uh, production, movement of people, human resources, mm, products, mm, companies, all these. So of course, it's important to see what's going on. I do think it's much more towards geopolitics rather than actual chemical engineering. So. We're going to skip that molecule of the day, sodium bicarbonate. You are into that. Okay. And finally, the last meme we'll check out. You made it to the bottom. So please enjoy this round of Dupont as your reward. Read about the 1800th century founder of Dupont. I don't think it's of general knowledge or to get to know the classical chemical engineers. And guys, that was it. Sorry for the long video. I do think it's important to try to make this once a week or twice or once every two weeks, because otherwise it's going to happen this, that there's like three, four weeks behind and it doesn't make that much sense to check the news from one month ago. I do think one week is sweet spot two week stops because then we cannot check out all the news. I need to skip a lot. I'm pretty sure that you were wondering on certain news that you saw and you wanted some analysis, but we didn't have the time. Sorry about that. But I will try to make this often. Maybe uh, we can select Fridays or Mondays for news. I think for news, Monday is a good day. Maybe, maybe not this Monday, but the following one will be a good time to start the chemical engineering news reviews. So guys, that was it. Which was your favorite news? Mine was definitely the one on Mitsubishi chemicals, of course. But what do you think about it? all the, the things that are happening in the chemical engineering world? Isn't this crazy? A lot of methanol, a lot of green energy, a lot of electrical vehicle batteries. That's great to hear. So guys, that will be it. Have a nice weekend as I will. Take care and see you in the next video.